Thank you for the music, Patricia. Um, welcome, and thank you for joining us for our second installation of the Healing Arts series. We kicked off the series last week with Lau Hala Matt from Flow Kakul, who shared some movements um, that we do uh, that we can do daily to help us ground, connect, and express. Uh, before I introduce our presenter for today, I will do a quick introduction of myself and of the Hawaii Arts Alliance. Um, my name is Dr. Sara Miesbon. Um, I'm the Qu Community Wellness Director at the Alliance. Um, the Alliance was founded in 1980, and our mission is to engage and transform our communities by supporting and cultivating creativity through the arts. Um, we are the state captain. Uh, for Americans for the Arts and a member of the State Advocates, uh, Arts Advocacy Network. And we advocate for all the arts, disciplines, and genres. Uh, we have five areas of programming, arts education with programs like Turnaround Arts Hawaii, arts collaborations with organizations like State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, uh, fiscal sponsorship for programs like Pow Wow Hawaii and the Performing Arts Learning um, centers across the state, um, a creative arts network that helps to support and advocate for the needs of our Hawaii-based artists, and community programs like Creative Wellness, which is what this healing arts program falls under. We launched the Creative uh, Wellness Initiative to address the topic of mental health and wellness through the use of arts and creative advocacy. Uh, we believe the arts are an essential aspect of our lifelong development and overall health. And we're developing programs that use the arts to help reduce stigma and the impact of mental illness while promoting wellness. For more information about the Creative Wellness Program, you can email me. My email is on um, our slide. We will also be sending these slides to you all so you can have access to our uh, contact information. Um, and if you're interested in more about the Alliance, please visit us on our website or email us um, at the email there. And uh, you can also find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. I'll turn it over to Dr. Misvisa Goss to share about Mental Health America of Hawaii. Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Dr. Misvisa Goss, and I'm joined by Amanda Martinez. We work for Mental Health America of Hawaii. So Mental Health America of Hawaii has been around for over 75 years and we provide a lot of education support. We are active in advocacy all around mental health and mental wellness. You have our contact information on the slide here. We do a lot of things in terms of trainings and I know that there's been some transitioning and some changes because of what's happening right now. So we have moved a lot of our trainings and educational pieces online. So if you're interested in checking some of those out, of course, the Healing Arts series is part of that. We're so thankful for Dr. Ms. Bond for inviting us in and for Patricia participating. So it's really awesome to see this every week and see how many people like really um, kind of need it and use it and are really inspired by it. But if you're wanting to learn more about us and some of our social media pieces, you can always check us out at our website where we do have online screeners. We have online trainings listed there as well. We also have resources available if you're looking for information regarding different things. And then our phone number, of course, we have it for Oahu and Maui. So you can call us if you're looking for any type of referrals or resources that you haven't been able to find. We can be found on Facebook with our Busy Bees group. We can be found on Instagram and Live Now. We also have Facebook groups for book clubs and our MHA Maui group. Great, thank you so much. We're so fortunate to work with Mental Health America of Hawaii. We have been, uh, they were one of our inspirations in starting this um, creative wellness initiative. And we've just been very fortunate to uh, collaborate with them on many different programs over the last year that um, we are uh, able to put stuff out to the community to help um, people find ways to use the arts um, to, to create, um, 
just general wellness for ourselves, as well as find ways to use it into, in their uh, respective fields. Um, I'm very excited to introduce you to our presenter for today's Healing Arts series. Patricia Blair is a board certified music therapist, having earned her Bachelor of Music degree in music therapy from Arizona State University in 2010. She completed her music therapy internship um, at the Center for Creative Therapeutic Art in uh, our ninth island of Las Vegas and has been practicing music therapy professionally in Hawaii since 2011. She's the owner of High Notes Music Therapy where she works with a variety of ages and client populations. She received her post-baccalaureate um, education at communica in communication science and disorders at U, uh, UH Japsom. She is an incredibly talented musician who plays the clarinet, guitar, ukulele, and piano, and loves sharing music with people of all ages. Um, before we dive into this wonderful session we have planned for you, a couple quick um, a quick disclaimer and housekeeping items. Yeah, so just a disclaimer, the Healing Arts Series is not an art therapy group. We really want to be specific to that because what we're really trying to offer is some psychoeducation and some experiential exercises that gets everyone thinking about creativity and how to bring that into their own life, but also introduces them to the idea that there are these different types of art therapies that are available. We want you to be able to get more information about what that looks like, how that's different than your own personal experience, and how that can be helpful in your healing process. So if you are looking for an art therapist, you can always search at the three places listed below. That's arttherapy.org, psychologytoday.com, or atcb.org if you are wanting to do it through a healing process. If you are starting to go through these art series, especially with this one today, because music is such, uh, it's such a vehicle for emotional processing. I think it brings up so many feelings. It can be deeply impactful. And for us, it can be sometimes challenging also to get into that place of feeling those emotions. So if at any time you're feeling unsafe, just know that we have these numbers and resources available. There's a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and the number is listed at 1-800-273-8255. And of course, the 24-7 um, Crisis Line of Hawaii that's available the Oahu number is that top number, 808-832-3100. And then the neighbor island, which is toll free, is at 1-800-753-6879. And at any point, if you're feeling like you need that information again, um, you can contact any of us personally within the chat box. Um, it doesn't have to be open to the panelists, and we will absolutely send you that information. So we're going to do a little bit of Zoom 101. Amanda, if you will walk us through it. I know some people are new to Zoom or not as savvy like myself as Zoom. So we're just going to have Amanda do a quick 101 for us. Of course. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are on Zoom today in a webinar format. So everyone's cameras as well as microphones are automatically turned off. So don't worry about accidentally turning anything on and making any unexpected appearances. That is all controlled on our end. Uh, we do encourage interaction. Um, we will be having um, some questions asked. We encourage comments and feedback during even interactions amongst you as participants. So in order to do that, you will be utilizing your chat box feature, which should be on your screen. Um, if you do decide to use and participate via the chat box, there are two options. So one option for the two says all panelists. If you send an a message to all panelists, then only us four will be able to see that message. However, if you send the message to all panelists and participants or attendees, then everyone who is on this webinar today will be able to see that message as well. So totally up to you. Um, if you have any questions about the material or um, the subject matter at discussion, go ahead and use your Q&A feature, which should also be on your screens. Um, I believe we will have some time dedicated at the end to address any questions as um, us as panelists and hosts will also be monitoring, monitoring the chat box if anyone drops any questions in there, but you do have a Q&A chat feature. Um, we again, like I said, encourage reactions and feel free to drop those into the chat box as you as they come up and you see fit. Wonderful. And um, I'm also going to second and encourage everybody to interact with us and really take this 
opportunity to uh, think um, how how we uh, experience music and um, and Patricia's going to do an exciting job for us to share how music can be used therapeutically in our lives. So with all that said, I'd like to introduce you to Patricia Blair. Um, and we're excited to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Sara, Amanda, and Mestiza for putting this together and inviting me to collaborate. I really appreciate the opportunity. And thank you all who are joining us right now or who are watching via recording at a later time. Um, I'm excited to share some music tools for self-care with you all. Um, first, though, I'm going to give a little brief overview of the field of music therapy and some of the ways that music can be used therapeutically. Um, but we have a couple of poll questions that Amanda is going to pull up first, because I want to know how familiar you are with music therapy and um, kind of what your impression or what your what you think music therapy is and to see people's like level of experience with it. So um, Amanda's going to share the poll questions. So how familiar are you with music therapy? Okay, all right, cool. We got about 23, 23% said very familiar. That's awesome. 57% um, said I've heard of it before, but don't fully understand it. And 20% said totally unfamiliar. So we're kind of all over the place, which is really neat. Um, I'm glad that you all are here and we can learn a little bit more about it together. Um, so our, we have one more poll question um, for maybe people who have heard of music therapy or totally are unfamiliar or really are um, familiar with it. What do you think music therapy is? Okay, great. A lot of you are on the right track already. Um, so music therapy is a healthcare service provided by a credentialed professional. Um, listening to your favorite song is something that we'll talk more today about how that kind of can be used in a therapeutic way, maybe for some self care, but the distinction between that and like direct music therapy services. But thank you all for participating in the poll. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now with my slides. Um, okay. So what is music therapy? Um, the official definition from the American Music Therapy Association, which is our professional association, is to accomplish individualized goals within a therapeutic relationship by a credentialed professional who has completed an approved music therapy program. Um, so there's a couple parts of this definition that I want to draw your attention to. Um, the first is that music therapy is clinical and evidence-based, meaning that it's um, the music interventions are applied in a way that is systematic and thought out um, to help clients achieve their goals. Um, and music therapy is evidence-based, meaning that there's research to support its use with various client populations. Um, and the other important part of this definition is the individualized goals that are addressed in music therapy. Um, we Music therapy is really highly individualized because everyone has different experiences with music. Um, 
different types of music that they like or respond to and has different things that they're working on in therapy. So it's very highly individualized. And that's what is going to make kind of what we're doing today a little bit different from what you would receive, what you would get if you're um, participating in direct music therapy services, because it's not super individualized today, but I hope it still will be useful to you. Um, music therapists must have a bachelor's degree or higher in music therapy from an approved college or university, which includes 1200 hours of clinical training. Um, music therapists must hold the MTBC credential issued through the certification board for music therapists. And this helps to protect the public. Um, by ensuring that professionals who say they're providing music therapy have the appropriate um, education and training to do so. And this is because music is such a powerful tool that it should be um, used by, in a way that's um, supported by research and education. Um, music therapy degrees require knowledge in psychology, medicine, and music. Um, some examples of music therapy are working with older adults to lessen the effects of dementia, um, patient or working with patients in hospitals and hospice to reduce pain, working with children who have autism to improve communication and social skills, working with people with Parkinson's disease to improve motor function, individuals dealing with anxiety and stress to increase coping skills, and working with individuals with traumatic brain injury to rehabilitate speech and movement. Um, so I want you to notice how none of the goals that are listed here are musical in nature. We're not like teaching how to play an instrument or um, or just providing music like for recreation or fun, um, but we're like actually targeting these very specific goal areas through the application of music. Um, and music therapists apply music in a clinical and evidence-based way to address these goals. Um, this is what, yeah, kind of differentiates music therapy from a music lesson or a drum circle or, you know, recreational um, music activity. So how does music therapy work? Uh, music is a natural part of the human experience. It can be found in every culture and music is present and accessible throughout the lifespan, which I think we all kind of inherently know that, that young children all the way to older adults can enjoy and participate in music in various ways. Um, but the, obviously the sessions and the type of music used is gonna look really different depending on who's participating. Um, and music is a form of nonverbal communication, which permits the expression of emotion without words. Um, many people experience physical responses to music. Um, some of these include movement. A lot of people use music to, or to support exercise, dancing, um, and many people demonstrate kind of just like unconscious um, movement to the beat of music, like toe tapping or moving the body to the beat of music. And oftentimes this is unconscious, like we do it without even realizing it. Um, music is also great for sensory motor stimulation, which um, is particularly useful for individuals who um, might have a reduced response to other types of stimuli. Um, music influences our autonomic responses as well. Um, evidence shows that music affects autonomic functions such as breathing, pulse, blood pressure, and muscle tension. However, the effects vary depending on the individual. So like two people are not gonna have the exact same autonomic response to the same piece of music. Um, it's very highly individualized. Um, and music also influences rhythmic auditory motor integration, meaning that rhythm influences the timing and readiness of the nervous system to engage in movement. And this can provide um, cues for timing movement, which is especially useful for people um, like with Parkinson's disease or who are recovering from a stroke or brain injury who maybe need assistance with time, with like gait training and timing their movements. Um, many people also experience emotional responses to music. Um, music reflects and relates to life events in a lot of different ways. Um, think about how music is used to like set the mood in movies um, or how particular pieces of music are associated with different life events. Um, for example, when you hear like the tune 
da 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 especially around this time of year. Um, I think most of us will associate that automatically with graduation. And this is true um, for a lot of different life events kind of on a communal scale. Um, this also happens on an individual level. I think most people have some association between a particular song or piece of music or type of music and a particular time in their life or a personal experience or a person or place. Um, so you can see how I think, you know, you can see from personal experience how music ties really strongly with emotion and memory. And oftentimes these are not conscious associations either, but they're, um, you can see how, yeah, music kind of like surpasses verbal expression to trigger these emotions. Um, I think it goes without saying that music's strong tie to emotion can make it a really powerful tool in therapy. Um, music actually causes neurologic changes in the brain, which may lead us to experience different emotions. Um, and music provides a vehicle for expression of emotions that are not easily expressed verbally. This can be especially useful for people who, because of a speech or language impairment or because of cultural or personal values, might have difficulty engaging in traditional talk therapy. Um, music can be a great way for those people to um, express themselves and connect with others in a way that's nonverbal. Um, and it's also useful to a variety of different people. Okay, so we're going to begin now our experiential part of the presentation. I have like a couple different music activities to share with you that are going to be receptive in nature. Um, but we have a little active participation component. Um, before we begin listening to music, we're going to do like a one word check in. Um, so th I want you to think about how you're feeling right now and reflect just or reflect or think of just one word that represents how you're feeling. Um, if you would like, you can share your word in the chat box. If you're listening to this with someone else, you can share it with others around you, or you just can keep it to yourself if you would like. So I'll give you a couple moments to do the check-in. Oops, some people put it in the chat interested happy excited scattered grateful calm thank you content thank you all for sharing and there's not a right or wrong answer to this it's whatever you're experiencing and we will do this again oh there's some more too great thank you for sharing um yeah tense energized curious overwhelmed um so Think of how you're, or we'll do this again at the end of our music experiences and you can see if there's any changes in your one word check in. Um, so the first activity we're going to do is a guided relaxation with music, um, followed by a receptive mindful listening to two pieces of instrumental music. As I mentioned before, music can have an effect on our autonomic and emotional responses, so I just invite you to experience the relaxation that occurs while you're listening to these pieces. Um, I'm going to open us with a guided meditation to ground us in our bodies and help us mindfully listen to the music. While I'm leading the meditation, I'm going to play some guitar accompaniment, which will be kind of um, a quieter volume. Oh, and I want to mention too, I'm presenting this from my home. I imagine many of you are at home too and aren't in an environment that's like soundproofed. Um, I had some like motorcycle or something going by a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, so if there are environmental sounds or sounds outside of this presentation that occur during this time, that is totally okay. That's a part of life. Um, but I want you to um, not stay with those sounds, you know, just let them pass by and then try to bring yourself back to the music experience. Mm -hmm. So to begin, get yourself into a comfortable position. This could mean lying down on a bed or the floor or sitting comfortably in a chair 
with your feet flat and symmetrical on the floor. And while you're doing that, take some time to loosen any belts or tight collars or anything that might restrict your breathing. support of the chair, bed, or floor for your body. Feel the support for the head, shoulders, the spine, and back. The arms and hands. The hips, legs, and yourself to sink into the surface, beginning to let go of any tension held in the body. If you are comfortable, allow the eyes to close gently. Become aware of your breathing. It may be quite fast and irregular. Just notice the pattern of your breathing, following the breath into your body and its release from your body. Gradually allow yourself to take deeper breaths. taking in the breath, gently releasing the breath. Allowing the breath to fall into its own natural pattern. Take in a deep breath and gently release any tension from the face through the forehead, the cheeks, and jaw. deep breath and gently release any tension from the neck and shoulders. Take in a deep breath and gently release any tension from the arms and hands.
Now that we are in a present, relaxed state, I will begin the recorded music. It may be a little louder than the meditation because I'm going to share my computer sound. Um, so please adjust your volume accordingly to whatever is comfortable for you. And we will listen to two pieces of recorded music for a total of 10 minutes. At the end of the music listening, I'll bring you back to our session with the verbal closing. So you can just sit back and enjoy the music for the next 10 minutes. Um, as you listen, I invite you to attend to any physical or emotional sensations you might experience. Um, pay attention to if there's a particular place in your body where you feel the music or if it leads you to a particular emotion or if there's any words or images that come up as we listen.
the music has come to an end, notice how relaxed your body is feeling and remember this feeling. You can allow your body to relax in this way at other times. Now become aware of your body in whatever relaxed position you are in. Begin to move your arms and legs. Take in a deep breath and let all the breath out. Stretch your arms and legs and gently stretch your whole body. And when you are ready, open your eyes. Okay, so thank you all for participating in that. Um, we're gonna do our one word again on how you're currently feeling. Were there any words or images that came to mind while we were listening? Or um, is there one word that represents how you're feeling right now after we've listened to the music? You can share it in the chat box or share it with someone who's with you or, or write it down or remember for later. Oh, someone said Mozart, correct. <laughs> Um, peaceful, calm, centered, relaxed. Thank you. Enlivened were some people's words. Several people said relaxed and grateful. Refresh. All right. Thank you all for sharing. Um, yeah, I hope that was a good experience for you that kind of led into some relaxation. Um, oh, and someone thought of ballet. Okay, like that was an image that came to mind. Great. Thank you for sharing, everybody. Um, and I noticed most people's words were quite different from than they were before we did the music and relaxation experience. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Oh, and someone said uplifted. Nice. Thank you. Um, all right, we're going to do another music experience. This will be our final music activity together. Um, and we're going to, in a similar way, listen mindfully to a piece of music, but this time it's going to be a song with words. Um, something I find so interesting about sharing music with people particularly music that has lyrics, is that um, if everybody kind of has their own interpretation and their own experiences with certain types of music. So when I do this type of activity with clients, I learn stuff from them. You know, maybe they've had a different I have a different interpretation of what the words mean or had a certain experience with a song or piece of music um, that I'm unfamiliar with, but I always can learn from them, which is really neat. Um, I think that's what makes music such also such a valuable tool for self care um, is that we're, you know, we're going to listen to a song in a couple minutes and that I think probably is unfamiliar to a lot of people but um, the great thing about music is you can listen to a song right now and maybe take one word or lyric or take something away from it or something like stands out to you for a particular reason it makes you feel a certain way um, and then you could listen to it a month or a year from now and like have a completely different interpretation of it you know something else could be meaningful to you about it at that time um, so it kind of reveals things about ourselves as well um, which I hope is what you'll take away from this whole presentation is that there's ways that music can be used kind of to um, help us get in touch with ourselves and our emotions and be used for self-care in that way. Um, so if you have not heard this song before, that's okay. I, I kind of intentionally chose a th song that I thought people wouldn't be familiar with, but I'm happy to introduce it to you. Um, the song is called Here and Now by Janice Stanfield. 
and I'm going to share the lyrics on my screen and I invite you to read the lyrics while we listen to the song and the recording is beautiful as well so I hope you enjoy the recording of her singing it um, and then observe if there's any particular word phrase or lyric that stands out to you while we listen as well as continuing to attend to any physical or emotional sensations you experience and after we listen to the song, there will be an opportunity to share the word or phrase that stood out to you in the chat box, or you also can just reflect on it personally if you don't want to share. Okay, so I'm going to go to the slide with the lyrics. One moment. And here's Here and Now by Jana Stanfield. <laughs> Stop to look around at the good life I have found. I can't help but see here and now. I have all that I need here and now. This is where I'm meant to be, and somehow tomorrow come what may. The image of my life that's in my mind And yet, when I let myself slow down I see beauty all around And I'm reminded once again Here and now This is where I'm meant to be And somehow Tomorrow come what may I will be okay As I learn to love Here and now I have all that I need Here and now This is where I'm meant to be that we've listened to the song think about what word or phrase stood out to you uh, you can share it in the chat box if you like or you may just want to write it down for yourself to think about um, and think about why this word or phrase stood out to you at this time what does it mean to you do you relate to it intellectually or emotionally somehow um, does it relate to how you're feeling right now or how you felt in the past or how you want to feel in the future? Um, does it remind you of an experience, a person or place? What, what resonated with you from this song that you would like to take with you moving forward? Um, and if you like, I see some people already shared the lyrics in the chat or the response. Um, and you can feel free to do that. You also can, I encourage you to like, you know, journal or talk to a friend about it at a later time if you don't want to share about it now. Um, and just kind of reflect on, yeah, just what, um, what that line or the song is trying to show you right now. 
Um, and if I did this like in a session, in a music therapy session with a client, we would kind of verbally process through the song meaning and where the client is at right now with their interpretation of it. Um, so as we are about to wrap up, I want to encourage you, you can do both of these activities at other times. Um, you can like mindfully listen to songs with lyrics or your preferred music or to instrumental music in, um, you know, whenever you like. I think a lot of times we just like listen to music in the background while we're doing something else. I do that all the time. Um, but it takes, it, you have kind of a different ear listening when, and a different experience when you listen mindfully to a piece of music as opposed to just listening in the background. Um, so I hope that some of what I have shared today about how to do that, kind of how to ground in our body and do like a body scan and then to listen to music and kind of see how it impacts your mood and your current, um, you know, your physical feelings. Um, yeah, I hope you'll just like kind of be able to be mindful of that moving forward and can use some of the stuff that we've done today as tools for your own self-care. Um, okay, so at this time, oh, wait, I'm going to show my last slide, just a sec. There we go. Okay. Um, if you have any follow-up questions after, we'll have a couple minutes for questions, I think, before we end the call, but um, if you have any follow-up questions or if you want to get in touch with me for whatever reason, if you feel like you or someone that you know might benefit from direct music therapy services, um, I have a private practice. This is my contact information, um, and yeah, I would love to hear from you if you want to learn more about music therapy, so thank you. Oh, and also I have another um, slide at the end, which I think Amanda can email to you if this whole slideshow if you're interested. This is just the music that I shared today with who, with all who recorded it. Um, and then some other suggestions for relaxation music activities. Oh, and where I, this is where the book that I got the guided meditation from. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Patricia. I know that I am, I get emotional every time I've heard that song in the last couple <laughs> days that we have been listening and practicing and doing the presentation. So each time I feel like it brings a different thing up for me. And so it's, it's just incredible how music has the power to connect to different parts of ourselves at different points in, in our lives. And, you know, I might go back and listen to that song um, next month and it'll have a completely different meaning for me. And that's just, it's incredible to, to remember how powerful music is. And it's part of everything that we do in our lives and um, it's everywhere. So it's such a useful tool for us. So thank you so much for sharing about um, music therapy and that, uh, that it is a profession and that it is a way that we can um, really manage uh, the mental health crisis that we are having in our world and, um, and have different ways that we can heal and connect and um, just stay well. Now, if uh, anyone has um, any questions, this is a great time. It looks like I think just one came through. Okay. Um, Terry's asking, has there been an increase in training for music therapists in multicultural music therapy as part of empathy for the clients, orientation, uh, ethnicity, gender, age, nationality, um, being that it's important in a culturally and musically diverse island like Hawaii? Um, I've noticed, I, I mean, yes, Terry, I think that is super important because, you know, because we are a really cultured, culturally diverse um, island. And I have, so I've been in the field for about 10 years and I have noticed kind of a, um, an increase in opportunities like that to learn about um, music from different cultures and how to incorporate stuff like clients' identities into the sessions. Um, however, that's also part of just the standards of practice for professional music therapists is that the services are client-centered and are sensitive to um, all the different identities that the clients bring to the sessions and, you know, music therapists need to be competent in, um, yeah, in that, in helping clients to express all of those different things and being just unconditionally accepting. 
Um, and that's especially important somewhere like this. We have a question in the chat. Question. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have a question in the mm -hmm. chat from Claudia. She says, can you please tell me again where the meditation guidance came from? Oh, yes, that I'll go to the, I'll like advance the slide real quick. Um, that came from a book called Receptive Methods in Music Therapy um, by Grucky and Wigram. Um, and it's from Jessica Kingsley Publishers. You probably could get it directly from their website, honestly, and they have published, they are a big publisher in music therapy literature. So you can learn a lot more about music therapy from them in general. That was where it was from. And I kind of adapted a couple different um, meditations that I thought would be appropriate, not knowing very much about who and how many people were gonna to participate today. So I hope you enjoyed it. We have another question in the chat from JMY. The question is, does music therapy give clients ideas about how to further work on their issues outside of the sessions as cognitive behavioral therapy does? Um, it definitely can. Yeah, I mean, generalization is a big part of it. Um, part of what I might do like in a music therapy session would be kind of teaching skills like this and maybe having it be more individualized to like the client's music preference and kind of what they are needing um, emotionally and cognitively and how they can um, kind of carry that forward. So yeah, that's part of it for sure. It would just be kind of more highly individualized to like what's the what is the client particularly working on and we might kind of work through together like oh let's you know create a playlist or do like a songwriting or something that you can share that you can think of when you're in a difficult moment or just practice breathing and kind of doing the grounding like through music and then the clients can do that on their own as well um, I just had a quick question just because I think it comes up a lot and people, you know, might be thinking that because you did mention making a playlist. Can you just tell us a little bit more about like the helpfulness of having a pre-created playlist and how you would use that if you were feeling, let's say, like an anxious or stressed? Um, I would do kind of... I mean, it's important to have it be like individualized to the client for sure. Oh, and something I wanted to mention as well is like that, you know, again, I chose this music today because I felt like it was relaxing to me. I also, since this is recorded, I was kind of restricted to music that's in the public domain um, or that I had permission to use. <laughs> so that also kind of influenced the music selections. But um the, it's important that it be really individualized to the client, I guess, because people all have different associations with music. Um, so I might kind of like sit down with them and say, okay, we're going to go through some like relaxation experiences together or go through some just music guided music experiences together and see kind of how the music influences your mood or your energy level. Um, and then show the clients how to do that on their own as well but it would be kind of more of a process I guess of developing that um, and I've done that with groups as well too of kind of like having each group member come bring um, a song that's personal to them for whatever reason and the songs that will remind them of that group experience and it's good for yeah kind of like group process as well perfect thank you but yeah I want to just say that like it's you know I think important if you really are, you know, going through something and you think like I need professional help, I think it, there is there's value for sure to being like assisted by a professional to create a playlist. You know, there's like an abundance of kind of like relaxing music mixes like on <laughs> YouTube and Spotify and stuff. But um, but it just because someone thinks that's relaxing doesn't mean it necessarily is for everyone. So there's that component as well. All right, thank you everybody. Um, I know there's more songs coming in. I'm sorry, more questions coming in. Yep. Um, and we are at one o'clock. So um, it, I'm happy to stay, if Patricia, if you're open to staying. I'm fine with that, uh, yeah, people if there's that more questions. have to go, then um, I'll just give you guys a quick heads up that um, we'll be continuing our series next week and the following week. Next week we will be featuring um, the literary arts with a writer, with writer Laurel Nakanishi. And the following week we'll offer a presentation on Ho'oponopono, the art of speaking truth by Manulani Meyer. So we hope you can join us there. And um, yeah, but thank you so much for everyone for being here. And um, 
we will answer these last questions and we hope you join us in the next couple weeks as we uh, finish out Mental Health Awareness Month, which is May, and um, the impetus for this uh, healing arts series. So, uh, next question here are, uh, do you ever create songs or chants um, with the client? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's like a, um, I mean, that's one of my favorite kind of interventions to facilitate with clients, honestly. Um, I've done stuff like writing, oftentimes it's easier to kind of write like a song parody and like change the theme of a song or do like a fill in the blank kind of thing, depending on the client's um, ability and comfort level with like expression through music like that. Um, so sometimes I'll start with that. I've also done kind of original songwriting and we'll kind of um, have the, you know, assist the, it's, it's always client led for sure with whatever they want to make the song about. But, um, but then I'll sometimes play like, oh, do you want it to be upbeat or what do you want the accompaniment to sound with and kind of will assist with the musical part of it. Um, so yes, there's kind of different, um, there's many ways to facilitate that, but I find it to be just really rewarding because it's like something that we can do in the moment together and can address the client's goals, but then it's something we can go back to as well. Um, and, and say, oh, remember when you wrote this song and what you were trying to like embody with that or what you were learning at that time that you wrote this song about. Um, and then we can go back and continue to refine it and to like make music together or like improvise together on that song. So yeah. There was one more question that came up and let me find it. I have it if um, you want me to, Sarah. Sure, it's from for Terry. It. Uh, what kind of initial intake questions do you ask to understand the client's orientation to music? Excellent question. Um, I don't think I have that on my intake form, but I usually, I'll ask it like when I first assess the client, because I do like usually a couple of assessment sessions before beginning like ongoing sessions with the client. Um, and that's usually part of it is just like, what, what music do you like? What's it, you know, tell me about your music background. Sometimes people, you know, it's not required that you have any music experience to participate in music therapy, but, um, but some people do and they come to, um, and I also just want to kind of know, like, what kind of music do you like to listen to, like, for pleasure? And what are you hoping to get out of the, out of music therapy? Um, oftentimes, too, it's just asking a parent, like, what have you noticed your child responds to? Um, and then kind of building from there. So I kind of will use a combination of, like, I guess the research for music therapy shows that the there's not like a particular type of music or particular genre that's like across the board um relaxing or therapeutic for whatever reason um because we all have our individual associations and experiences but um what most people respond best to and is most like therapeutic um, and best to use in music therapy is music that the clients are familiar with and it's their preferred music. So, you know, I've done sessions centered around like rap and reggae music <laughs> and stuff that maybe on the surface doesn't look totally, um, doesn't seem like it would be therapeutic to everybody, but for some people it totally is. And that's kind of part of the music therapist job, I guess, is to like get to know the clients musically. Um, and sometimes I'll introduce music that's unfamiliar to the clients as well, if I think it's something that they can benefit from, or if there's some um, goal that's being addressed that involves them like learning unfamiliar music or being introduced to it. Um, so yeah, kind of combination, but it's like a process of at least a couple sessions of getting to know the clients and just asking. Yeah, Gail mentioned, um, I'm thinking of how helpful music therapy would be for those who are sick right now. And, you know, as you mentioned at the beginning, there's so many um, important uses for music therapy. And um, yeah, I think that there's being in a hospital setting and using music therapeutically, as well as a, a more formalized music therapy program, um, I find would be incredibly useful and hopefully we'll be able to continue pushing out um, more options for this kind of programming in our, in our hospitals and community settings. And um, yeah, so yes. Gail. Yeah, definitely. No, I know there, I know like music therapists personally that are like on the front lines in the, you know, in other states and stuff and that are still like going into work in the hospital or um, 
or facility setting, you know, cause it is so valuable during this time. Um, so yeah, shout out to those people. <laughs> Great. Um, I think that's all the questions. Um, we left the link for the uh, evaluation in the chat. We will also send it out to you all through our, um, our follow-up email. Um, and uh, there it is again. Thank you, Amanda. And um, along with the C video recording from today and the slides so that you have all of our contact information, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us if you have more questions and, um, you know, just interested in any part of what we talked about today. We are here to uh, share about the work that is happening in our communities as well as, you know, um, provide other resources if needed, um, answer any questions. So uh, thank you to my team for uh, all the wonderful work and support. Thank you, of course, to our um, presenter, Patricia Blair. Um, it was really an, a, a wonderful experience. I, I always feel relaxed after experiencing um, with you. And I think um, others have mentioned that throughout our, our chat. So um, it's been nice to uh, experience it with you all. So uh, thank you everybody for being here and we hope to see you next week for our third um, edition of Healing Arts series um, next Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Thanks everyone. We hope to see Hello, you. Hello everyone. Thank you. Yeah.